astounded. Dan and Jay are indeed from Boston. Jerry's from uh, New York, and uh, the folks in Boston come via the way of WBZ Channel 4. We wish you both good luck, as you do, you, Jerry. Uh, I wish everybody the best of your luck, because anybody who hangs around for three consecutive games has a wonderful opportunity to uh, stay around for the ultimate challenge, which has now grown to $27,000. Good luck to all of you. We're going to go to this little uh, sprint round that I uh, pull out here on the cards, and they're worth $100 for every correct answer. And if you're wrong, it'll cost you $100. I will caution you to listen carefully and stand by, because it's going to come up in just a second as I set the clock at one minute. The player with the most money at the end of the sprint will have the selection from the category board. Stand by, here's your clock, and we're ready to go. In issue 50 of Superman Comics, Clark Kent reportedly will propose to what longtime lady friend? Jay? Lois Lane. Correct. An earthquake that measured 4.5 on the Richter scale was reported at Glacier Bay National Park in what state? Jerry? Alaska. Correct. Astronauts will take a spacewalk in 1993 to repair what space telescope? Dan, the Hubble. Correct. A 1990 Excellence in Television Award was won last week by what Canadian-born network TV anchor? Gary? Peter Jennings. Correct. In what Southern California city would you find NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory? Jay? Pasadena. Correct. What's the stage name of the actress born Frances Gum? Jay? Judy Garland. Correct. In a 1980s TV series, Robert Urich played what East Coast detective? Dan. Spencer for hire. That's more than enough. Name the nurse known as the lady with the lamp. Jay? Florence Nightingale. Correct. And we finished the questions, and uh, Jay, you're out in front. Dan, wasn't, wasn't Spencer shot in Boston? Wasn't that a Boston yes. series? Yes. I was glad you got it. You <laughs> saved, saved your face. I can go back home now. Yes, indeed. All the money you folks earned today goes into your Citibank Visa account, and the cash and the benefits in that account are yours to keep. Ready to play, and uh, Jay, you'll have the selection in a moment. These are those categories. Faces in the news all about Cleveland. Nice little stories. Japanese business moves. Sevens up. Halls of Fame. And Jay, it's your choice. We'll try Sevens up. Sevens up. Let's see what we have there. We have an $150 question on Seven Wars, Seven Seas, and Seven Wonders of the World at 250. Higher the value of the couple of questions. Lock in and wager. And two of you going for the Seven Seas question, Gary and Jay, stand by for $200. Liberia's troubled capital city is located on the shores of what major body of water? Jay? Pacific Ocean. No, that is not right, Gary. You can answer if you want. Yes, the Atlantic. The Atlantic Ocean is correct for $200. Dan for $250. Name the only wonder of the ancient world that is still standing today. Um, the Great Pyramid. Judge, you'll accept that? Yes, I will. Yeah, there are the dog shops and the other, but the Great Pyramid is a totally acceptable answer. And you have control of the game, Dan. Where do you want to uh, go? Let's have faces in the news, please. Faces in the news for $150, Bob Cherry, but Doug Wilder, and Mario Vargas Losa. You will please collect one and make the wager. All right, all three of you going for Doug Wilder for $200. And so the media game doubles the value of all of the questions. That makes that one worth $400. And a chance to sweep the board at... 1200 later on. Stand by all three of you. Doug Wilder, grandson of slaves, calls his values the new mainstream and says they're the reason he is America's first elected black governor. What state does govern? Gary? Virginia. Virginia is correct. I had a chance to really move ahead, Gary. You want to go for either one of those other two or let him stand? I'll go for Bob Gary. Bob Gary for three hundred dollars. Senator Bob Gary is a Vietnam era Medal of Honor recipient. Before his election to the Senate, what office did he hold in his native Nebraska? Senate. I'm a governor. Judge? I'm afraid I I'm afraid he got too much of Senator out. It's really. <laughs> yeah, you even confess. There's no secret. Uh, all right, uh, we'll, we'll pick it up and run again in the next round. It's still a close race, and when we come back, you'll see more of the challenges right after this. thing going into commercial. What, what is, do you know what that is? DC fight song. Now they're going to think we're prejudiced here, rooting for Boston. You want me to sing a few bars of East Side, West Side, Side West, in New York or whatever? I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no way. So we have New York versus Boston this time around. Dan, what do you do when you're not uh, doing this stuff? Uh, I love doing? playing games. I love playing chess and bridge. And um, also I speak a little acting on the side too. 
you know, well-rounded individual. This is a little mental chess we go through here. You're a stand-up comedian. Yeah. They told me you do impressions for me. A little sample? Yes, Dick. I think everyone should watch the challenges. They just might love something. <laughs> no, no, fair enough. Now I've got to figure out who it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, immediately. Uh, Mr. Burton, maybe? Thank you. Oh, <laughs> uh, Jay, uh, I, I don't phrase this right. You're not in the fire business. You are in the fire prevention business. I well, actually, um, I was in the field for 12 years. Recently, I came in to be assistant fire marshal, which is in fire prevention. And uh, we're the best country at putting out fires, but that's probably because we're the worst at preventing them from starting. Yeah, we all got to be a little more careful. Hey, before I leave you, I want to remind everybody of one thing. Next week, we begin a very special thing. We're going to bring back nine of the top money winners on the challenges and we're going to compete in our very first tournament of champions it'll be a run for five days they'll be competing for thousands of dollars in cash uh, it'll be kind of an interesting thing promises to be very exciting send the word to boston new york wherever wherever you travel you'll tell everybody and now let's go back to the board here where we have four subjects left and gary you will have the choice of all about cleveland so uh, nice little story japanese business moves and halls of fame I'll go with nice little stories. Nice little stories, all right, for 150 Little Women, Little Orphan Annie, and the Little Mermaid. Please make your way to gentlemen. Everybody gets a question this time. Gary, we'll start with you. A 19th century novel tells the story of four little women named Meg, Beth, Joe, and Amy who? Alcott. Louisa May Alcott wrote it. It was March is the name of the year. Uh, <laughs> all right, for $200, Jay. For this one on the Little Orphan Annie question, the comic strip Little Orphan Annie relates the adventures of a little girl named Annie and her faithful dog Sandy, named Annie's guardian. Oh, old Daddy Warbuck. Oh, there he was, all right in the background. Dan, for $250, look to the video wall. This world-famous statue depicting the title character of Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale is located in what city? Copenhagen. You are right here in Denmark. First name, John. Daryl. It's Daryl. You got him. I got you the back through me, and I know these names. <laughs> <laughs> it's Daryl Paul and John, John Oates. Oates. We'll sing it, but we got it wrong. All right, sorry about that, sir. Let's uh, put the last two remaining categories up. All about Cleveland and Japanese business moves are right, the choice. And Dan, it's yours. Let's have Japanese business moves. All right, check them out. We have automobiles, electronics, and real estate. Place your wager, gentlemen. Gary and Jay for $150. What Japanese automaker currently manufactures the luxury car known as the Infinity? Nissan is the answer. And Dan for $200. The Japanese broadcasting system is currently using HDTV. What do the initials HDTV stand for? High definition television. Your corrector for $200. And at the moment, you got the lead at $900, but things I wouldn't be too sanguine about that. It could change, and we'll be back with the second half of the game when we return. We'll double the value of all of our questions. All news and current events questions are verified by Newsweek magazine. And now, let's get back to the challengers. Thank you, Don, very much. Uh, pretty good game going here. It's a little bit of a stretch, Jay, between you and Dan. He has 900, you have 200, and Gary, you're sitting smack dab in the middle with 550, and this is where everything changes when we double the value of all the questions. Six new categories up there on the board. We have movies now playing. Two Martins and A. Lewis. America in the 20s. Russian Revolution Day. Globe Hopping and Shopping. And What Black and White. 
choice is yours, Dan. Where do you want to well, start? Well, let's find out what's black and white. All right, check it out for $300. We have a newspaper, a zebra, and a penguin. Gentlemen, make your wager, if you will, please. All right, let's go for the $300 question, Gary and Jay. The newspaper question. Name this newspaper whose name is the Russian word for truth. Jay? Pravda. That is right. And uh, let's go to you, Dan, for the $400 question. Name the country where you might be heard of zebras roaming free in Nairobi National Park. Kenya. You are correct, sir, for $400. Congratulations. Now, we have some other situations over there, Dan. Which one would you like? Uh, let's try movies now playing. All right. Uh, for $300, Flatliners, Mr. Destiny, and Desperate Hours. Time to make a bet. Everybody gets a question this time. Dan, for $300, name the producer of the film Flatliners, who's often found in front of the camera in films such as Black Rain and War of the Roses. Michael Douglas. Correct. For $400, Jay, look to the video wall and let's watch a clip from the new hit movie, Mr. Destiny. Roll the clip, please. What do you think? What do you think? I found you in the entire world. That was true. All right, Mr. Destiny, co-star Jim Belushi. What hard-working English actor plays the title character? Michael Caine. Michael Caine is right for $400. Gary for five. In the original 1955 version of The Desperate Hours, Humphrey Bogart played a convict who terrorizes the family in their home. Who plays Bogie's role in the new version? Me Michael... Rourke. I'm sorry, I can't... Mickey Rourke. Right. You wouldn't take Michael for Mickey, Judge? No, I'm afraid not. All right. All right. Sorry about that, Jerry. That's the way it goes, Jerry. I tried. I pled and failed. <laughs> Jerry, what would you like? We're fine. Now we're in the 20s. America in the 20s. All right, we have politics, music, and the law. And it's time to make your wish. All right, two of you going to the $300 political question, uh, Gary and Jay. Our 29th president, whose term in office was noted mainly for the Teapot Dome scandal, was inaugurated in 1921. Name that president. Gary? Harding. Harding is right for $300. For $500, Dan, in 1925, Tennessee teacher John Scopes went on trial for teaching evolution. Name the noted orator who led the prosecution. Uh, William John Jennings Bryant. That is right, sir, for $500. <laughs> well, Dan, you have control of the game. Which one of these last three would you like? Let's like two Martins and Lewis. Two Martins and a Lewis. We have Mary Martin and Steve Martin and Meriwether Lewis. Two Martins and one Lewis. Make that way here. All right, uh, let's go to the Steve Martin situation with Dan and Jerry. First off, $400 in 1979. Steve Martin was a jerk. In 1983, he was a man with two what? Jerry? Brain. Two brains. It's right for $400. J for 500, Lewis and Clark explored the U.S. Northwest with the help of what female Indian guide? Dr. Jawea. You are absolutely right, sir, for $500. And Jay, you've got control of the last two. Which one? Let's try Russian Revolution Day. All right, check it out. So, uh, by the way, today is the day on which the Soviet Union celebrates the 73rd anniversary of the Russian Revolution. These questions are all about the revolution and its aftermath. The first one deals with the party, the parade, and religion. $500. Gentlemen, it's time to place that wager. Okay, you're in there. Okay, we'll go to Dan and Gary for the $300 question. Name the Radical Communist Party which overthrew Russia's provisional government in October of 1917. Gary? Bolshevik. Correct. For $500, Jay. Last month, for the first time since the Russian Revolution, a mass was celebrated in what onion-domed red square cathedral? Sorry, St. Basil's was the uh, answer we were looking for. Gary, the last one, you yes, actually don't have much of a choice. There's only one. I'll read it for you, if I may. Europe, Asia, and Africa. Through the $500 question coming up on Globe Hopping Shopping. Where do we go, gentlemen, with your wages? All right, uh, we'll go first to UJ for $300. The European question, what department store founded in 1849 is generally considered to be one of the finest in London? Paris, $400, Dan and Gary. It translates into English as silver, mint, or gilt. 
But by what name do we know the famous shopping district of Tokyo? Gentlemen, don't go shopping over to Shinza was the answer. That was not a success for any of you. That sound tells us we're moving into our final challenge of the day. And if you're ready, here is your final challenge of the day. It is World News Roundup. And there you are. You got in front. Dan, $2,100. Gary, uh, $1,050. And Jay at $600. We'll be back to play the final challenge round right after this work. Here's the day. Receive a Citibank Visa account with all the distinct benefits and exclusive services that make it America's most widely used Visa card. And now, back to the final challenge. And here's your host, Dick Clark. Thank you, Don Maul, very much. Uh, we're all set to play the final challenge. The final challenge category is the World News Roundup, and when you check what's going on over there, uh, it's kind of interesting. Dan, you're with $2,100. Jay, with $600. Jerry, with $1,050. So we're really smattering of everything. It's uh, New York versus Boston this time around. Good luck to all of you. Here are the questions, gentlemen. The first one, at even odds, on ceremonies. You can double your wager on the environment and triple it on superpower relations. A little bit of uh, mental gymnastics that you're going now. We'll give you about 15 seconds to select your question and make your final wager today. Jay has the toughest job. He's got to try to block this. And remember, the highest wager gets the question. Challenge is not Our players have locked in the choices today, if you will, for your $600 to carry your wages. I went triple for $500. All right, Jerry, with $1,050, how did you play it? I wanted to be politically correct with the environment for $800. So far, so good. You each have a question. We'll see what Dan's going to do with his $2,100. Well, I went with superpower relations for $1050. <laughs> I have a sneaky feeling, Jay, that he's out big for that one. So Dan and Gary, we'll turn to you now. And the first one to answer the question will be Gary. You wagered $800 at WR, the grand total of $2,650 if you get it correctly. The environment, a recent 35 nation conference in Spain failed to come up with any strong proposals for dealing with the pollution of a major body of water vital to those nations. That body of water is called the cradle of European civilization. $2,650 name that body of water. The Mediterranean Sea. You are absolutely right. <laughs> You've got yourself $2,650. Dan, the pressure is on. I'm afraid, Jay, that's it for you. Stand by and root for one of these guys. Here, Dan, here we go. Three times the wager. You put $1,050 in at a grand total of $5,250. You just put in the skill and the money, but don't win the game. Good luck to you, sir. The Start Negotiations, and that's S-T-A-R-T, began in 1982 in Geneva. The United States and the Soviet Union hoped to finish the Start Agreement before the end of the year. For $5,250, what do the letters in start stand for? Strategic Arms Reduction Talk. I'm sorry, Dan. Gary, you've won it. Congratulations. All the way around. Jay ends up with $600. Dan, a thousand Gary, your two-day total is $6,650. Now, Gary... They have just handed me this. Remember Mickey Rourke and Michael? <laughs> Mickey Rourke's name is Philip Andre Rourke, Jr. Take that home, sleep with it. That clarifies that. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you, Jay. Thanks ever so much. We'll see you the next time on the channel. Just for now, Dick Clark, so long. <laughs> Some contestants today will receive Sunmade Fruit Bits. Enjoy delicious fruit snack from Sunmade, real fruit, real good. And the professional salad shooter electric slicer shredder from Presto. A great big idea for salads and much, much more big capacity and power. And use Fleischman and Geese to warm their hearts with homemade bread fresh from the oven. Fleischman Geese for heartwarming results every time.
And now there's a new way to clean your dentures, Dentu Foam. The deep cleaning of a tablet, the speed of a toothpaste. New Dentu Foam. And Ferrero Rocher, the nutty, crunchy, smooth and crispy milk chocolate experience. With Ferrero Rocher, expect the unexpected. Don Morrow speaking. The Challengers is a Ron Greenberg production in association with Dick Clark Productions.